Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. It is a Monday night. It's a new week and a new 2020. I just feel like every week it's a new year, and it's, it's amazing. I love it. This week, uh, in case you were wondering about uh, how things were going in the arc of uh, the story of Earth, we now have murdering hornets or wasps, whatever they're called. <laughs> I don't read the full news story, but they're here now, so don't worry. If you don't die of the virus, uh, something else will get you. Welcome to America, the new Australia. Tonight, we have <laughs> an amazing guest. Uh, I have done maybe one show with him in my life. I don't even know if he was actually on the show, if I'm being honest. I, I should figure that out. <laughs> I don't think I was. No, I don't think you were on it, but you were definitely at it. I was at it. Okay, well, he crushed. <laughs> oh no, I don't know that. But I'll tell you this: uh, he's an incredible comic. If you don't follow him on social media, you probably should, because he's posting a lot of really cool, really funny stuff. And unfortunately, he's multi-talented. So if I wasn't insecure enough, let's do a show. Um, so anyway, <laughs> let me give you my pre-written introduction, Tony. Here we go. Uh, he is a comedian from the uh, upper middle area of Texas, but I think originally from the southern area of Texas. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I, you don't have a Wikipedia page. This was hard. Uh, I, I, I started in Dallas, but I am originally from San Antonio, so I'll give you a point. You know what? All right, why don't you just introduce yourself? Because this is not... No, no, I like this. No, no. I, this is not going great. No, you got a point. So. Okay, okay. He, uh, <laughs> He's been doing comedy for somewhere between five and 28 years. Four, but I'll, I'll give it to you, Ding. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're close enough. Okay. Um, oh, they can't hear me. Hold on. <laughs> okay. What is that? <laughs> Who's they? Do we have a live audience? I hear, I can hear Tony. I can't hear Landry. That's what they're saying. Is that better? Is so, that better, John Tyler? So, so they've just been hearing my like my evil laugh, just <laughs> just you like, staring at me talking way too much, <laughs> and then just randomly laughing. Oh, That's okay. I, this live producer I have is telling me we are now good. Oh, great! So I guess now we can actually do the show. Okay, now you, uh, okay, redo it. Now you have the facts about me. So, yeah. boom. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay, I should get it this time. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, anyone else that's watching, Martian, <laughs> anteater, whatever, our, our, our guest tonight, see, I already am fumbling. Okay. Uh, is a comedian, but doing it for less than five years. <laughs> <laughs> is that not the most insulting thing? <laughs> Our comedian has just started. He has just Brand begun. On the scene. He's crushing it, though. <laughs> He's, he, this is true. He's worked with some pretty cool names in comedy. I, yeah, I okay. have. All right. I don't have those names on me. I can, uh, I've worked Jim Jeffries, TJ Miller, Sam Morrell. Uh, Chris Frangiola, yeah. Those well, are what did you think of Jim Jeffries, by the way, as a person, uh, not a comic? He's a sweet guy. He, Boy, he I really got the opposite. N you did? Yeah. When did you work with him? Well, uh, see, I, I now I didn't do stand up with him, but I was at his show for a day, like shadow yeah. fighting, and uh, yeah. wasn't it wasn't the most pleasant experience of my life. I dude, I could get that because like when yeah. before the show started, his manager introduced me in the green room, and you could tell he was a little standoffish, and we really didn't. Uh, I wouldn't say vibe well at first, yeah. but oh, then yeah. after, after he saw my set, uh, I went on right Didn't before he him. did. Yeah, and he kind of came in. He kind of came in, which he didn't have to do in the green room. He told me like, great set. Like didn't have to do. Like he was literally getting called on stage, and he did that and then like that night he paid for us to go out and drink and have a good time so like i had a but it's like one of those things it's sometimes you meet someone and maybe they're having a bad personal day you know and then you're like well they they were kind of a dick to me it's like well maybe like their dog died you know what yeah. i mean 
I well, I also don't put any blame on anyone that's mean to me because I'm like I'm so unlikable to begin with that I'm like I get it. You also look like a Hollywood producer's son, where they're just like they're like Landry, go check up on the Jim Jeffrey show, and you walk in with I'm like right a vape. On. Yeah, you walk in with a vape, and you're just like. <laughs> Needs more giraffes. <laughs> yeah, you're like, fuck this kid. I'm like, my dad said. I can do that. Yeah. My father, Mr. Warner, and his Maybe brother. You heard of him? <laughs> the W is his name. <laughs> Please call me Mr. Warner's son. <laughs> call me Junior. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he has worked with some big names in comedy. Yeah. Less than five years, but in a good way. Yeah. Um, is it an actor? I oh uh, yeah I I I I try. Okay. I uh, try. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, working on being an actor, a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. That yep. one's accurate. Uh, yep. Has a camera. I have a camera. Some would say you are a professional camera man. A pro I would say photographer, yeah. Photographer is probably a better word. <laughs> <laughs> You're a, what are you going to school first for? I want to be a professional cameraman. Like, you <laughs> camera are the wrong <laughs> What do you do? I own cameras. Do you rent them out? No, I just no. own them. <laughs> yeah, professionally. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, what else? Uh, oh, and, oh, I didn't mention the Texas part. I'm from Texas. Um, and then I'm gonna try and sound this out. Okay. We'll see if I get it. Okay. T -t um, t -t 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 Tawny. It's close enough, close enough. Uh, Ca Care Bear. <laughs> Tawny that, that, that's Tawny my Kim. that's my mother's name and I was originally gonna go by that if I was a girl but because I'm not we went with Tony Casillas but you were close like I was almost there like last minute I grew a penis like month eight and a half it's I grew up the, the late bloomers <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight and a half months in my mom's belly. Fucking God was like, that one's going to be a boy. And he just put a 13 inch cock on me. So for the first. <laughs> the end. Yeah, dude, for the first like years of my life, it was rough. Yeah. <laughs> I do it was like just... the idea, though, that if you didn't, if you didn't, uh, that means up till month eight and a half, everything yeah. was decorated for, for a girl baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I think was I... prepared for the other way to go. Oh, and they kept it like that for the first 14 years of my life. And that's why I think I'm metrosexual now. And that would do it. <laughs> that did it. You know, my mom yeah. bought me Barbie dolls. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was good. And that's why you now sit on podcasts in a giant quilt. Is that what's happening? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. bought me like a life supply of tampons. She goes, these. She's like, these aren't going to waste, Tony. And I'm like, why don't you you use it? Or Angelina, my sister. And she goes, no, we bought you some too. So yeah. for the first like 15 years of my life, I had to just use them to plug up holes. Any any hole. Any of them. Any of them. But you know, and then when you got to college, you could soak them in vodka. Did, did, did you ever do that? You do that? No, I never no. did that, but I knew someone that did. What happened? Like, that's not a good decision. Well, okay, so this I knew this kid in college who was a horrible alcoholic and uh, yep. a friend which you, of mine. <laughs> yeah, which you didn't uh, have to say that he's an alcoholic because I think if you're going to shove a tampon up your ass to get drunker, you've passed alcoholism. <laughs> yeah, by a long shot. Yeah. Well, the thing was, like, it was uh, finals week, and um, and I think at that point he had uh, given up. But he knew he yeah. couldn't sneak any vodka into class anymore because it was like for finals they like locked down. It's like uh, it's like there's always an active school shooting when when it's finals week. And uh, yeah, so he soaked it up, he popped it in, and uh, and then and then passed out in the middle of the, of the test. Jesus Christ. I think that's when he realized he had a problem, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I hope. Yeah, I hope. That, but... <laughs> Is, but he's good now? Uh, I don't know. He Maybe. He might be dead. <laughs> I don't still know him. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's always weird. Like I had I had a buddy like that, but with like weed. But like he was actually like when he studied stoned, where he mm-hmm. would take a test stoned, like he would ace the test. But yeah. if he was sober, he would fail it. And uh this was my freshman year of college and I was struggling and he's like, Tony, why don't you try? Why don't you try fucking smoking? Like, dude, the first time I tried smoking and studying, I passed out. And I like woke up and missed the test. I just missed. It. <laughs> and then, then I tried once. It wasn't like a final. It was like a pop quiz. I was like, "Fuck it, let's just go really high." And I, I got the worst grade. I got like a thirteen percent, even though it was like multiple choice. Where it's like you, sh- I should have gotten twenty five at least. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just bad because I, I would just second guess. Like I would know the answer. I would write it down, and I'm like, "Fuck it, maybe oranges are red." <laughs> yeah, because at that point, in reality, who fucking knows? Yeah. I remember the first time I ever got high, um, I, I had a friend who was, he, okay, so this, I was like 22, because I yeah. started late, and, um, but my friend was fresh out of high school, already been arrested a couple times, so he was like, hey, you should smoke weed with me. And I'm like, but I never have. And he's like, this is a good time to start. And I'm like, okay. Uh, so I got, I was, it was in between leaving work and going yeah. to a comedy show 40 minutes away. Jesus. And um, so I got into his car after work and we drove to a hospital into their parking lot to smoke, which is an emergency <laughs> room parking lot. For the first time smoking, not great. That's, no. that's more anxiety provoking. Were you sitting there? Were you sitting there like, is this weed so strong? I might have to fucking go to the emergency room. Yeah. Well, you know, and that was the thing is so I should have picked someone better to smoke with because this is a kid who, as we were smoking, was like, sometimes I get panic attacks real bad and I have to go to the hospital. And I feel like <laughs> that's why we were there. <laughs> <laughs> That's, dude, that's why weed isn't for everybody, man. Yeah, no, I really, I don't smoke really at all now. It's just, uh, but, uh, but yeah, that one was bad because I didn't realize there was a difference between just like smoking, you know, the little, yeah, yeah w- uh, versus like a bong. And he had yeah. only a bong. And oh, so boy. I hit it a couple times, not knowing. Oh, what no. And, uh, and then I was like, no, this didn't do anything to me. So I get back into my car and I'm driving to the show and halfway there I'm like, oh, oh, I'm gonna <laughs> die on this. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. And, well, and I was driving, so I was like, uh, the whole time I'm driving, I'm freaking out. I'm like, I know I'm gonna wreck, but if I wreck, yeah. I don't want them to be like, he was just a bad driver. I want them to know there was a reason. So I pulled out my phone <laughs> and I opened my notes app and I was like, I am so high right now. I thought it would be a good idea to smoke weed. And I'm typing this all out. I thought it would be a good idea to smoke weed. I'm so high. Yeah. If I'm dead. <laughs> no more. And then now I you're said, not just, now you're not just, you're stoned and driving. You're writing a manifesto yeah. while stoned, while yeah. driving. <laughs> oh yeah. And, and it's, and I, there's no way I was staying in any lanes whatsoever. And, uh, but then as I was sitting there, I I felt very accomplished. I had written this note and then I realized no one knows the passcode to my phone. So I had to pull that (laughs) down, go to the settings, take off the passcode, delete some stuff that I didn't want people finding if they got into my phone. Still driving. (laughs) (laughs) You know what would have happened if you passed away during that that, uh, drive? (laughs) Uh, the dare campaign and like texting and driving people would have teamed up and they would have become a super fucking power oh, they would have t- yeah. <laughs> they're like see this do you see this good christian boy yeah and it's just like hi, <laughs> hi. they just find old clips of me doing stand-up in churches and they're like see see what went wrong 
if, if that would happen to any of us, they would have been like, see this virgin. And it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> see this virgin. He died before having sex. Do you want that to be you? <laughs> yeah, I feel like the idea that the D.A.R.E. campaign has now verged into being like, almost like sex shaming people of being like, yeah. listen, do you want to die before you fuck for the first time? Honestly, because you, you can't be anti-drug and anti-fucking because then you're just lame. True. Because yeah. those people, if you meet the dare people, they're just like, dude, I'm just high off life. I don't need fucking <laughs> drugs to make me f- feel better. It's like, well, sometimes you do. Yeah. Like, and you know that those, those dare people are fucking on the way to the school, so. Oh, definitely. You they're just it. like fucking, yeah, they're just pumped up horn dogs. <laughs> Just, they just got out of high school, so they have to fuck each other so they don't, like, try to fuck the high school kids because they'll be like, but they're 17. <laughs> yeah. Hey, in Oklahoma, it's legal at 16, so it was even Jeez. weird. Yeah, because o- Oklahoma and Texas, we're, we're fucked. We're, <laughs> we're so – dude, we're so stupid sometimes with our laws. Oh, we're the worst. Because we'll be like, oh, because I know Denton, a while back, like not even that long ago, was like a dry county. And it's like, eh, alcohol's, ba- alcohol's bad, but you can marry a 14-year-old if the parents say it's okay. It's like, what? <laughs> That's what? So You're just- disturbing. Yeah, it's like, let her fucking drink over selling her to some man for some land, you know? <laughs> yeah. I always, uh, I'm actually very glad I wasn't around in the whole, th- when you could like get a wife for a couple acres. Dude, honestly, that wasn't that long ago, man. Yeah. Cause like, right. cause I was, I was watching the Waco miniseries. Oh, and even yeah. in that, even in that they bring it up cause one girl was 14 and, uh, that happened in, I think the nineties, right? Like late nineties, the Waco. Yeah. I think right around there for sure. And, uh, they were saying that it is. It is legal around that time if you're 14 and your parents sign off to get married. Boy, so, I, I, I wouldn't have trusted my parents with that kind of power. No! My parents would have fucking... <laughs> they would have given me to some fucking lame ass. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. They're like, listen, you're going to have to help him in algebra. He's awful. <laughs> your aunt, Tony, your Aunt Barb is very lonely. <laughs> 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 Go show her some, give her some company. <laughs> but Aunt Barb's cookies are shit, Dad. <laughs> yeah, that's the main concern of a 14-year-old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cookies. For me, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, oh. anyways, from mid, mid, oh, middle of Texas, done comedy about four years, worked with some of the greatest things <laughs> in comedy. My guest tonight, Tony Casillas. What's going on? We got it. <laughs> That was a great intro. That was like the longest intro I've ever done. <laughs> that's great. I love it. Twenty minute intros. That's what that's what I do. <laughs> that's the end of the show. Thank you for listening. That's like, that's all the <laughs> and the outro's thirty minutes. <laughs>